Because we have a rope that is being stretched along the length of the rope, we are dealing with tensile stress here. Part A asks us for the strain on the rope. Strain for tensile forces are defined as the change in the length of the rope divided by the initial length of the rope, both of which are given to us by the problem. We're told here that the rope has been stretched by 2.8 centimeters, meaning that will be our delta L, and we're also given the initial length of the rope, so that will be our L. I put those values into the formula, and it's worth noting that I converted from 15 meters into 1,500 centimeters to make our units consistent. And plugging this into our calculator, we find a strain of 1.9 times 10 to the negative 3. There is no unit, as the units cancel out. Part B asks us for the stress on the rope. Now, stress is defined similarly to pressure. It's an amount of force divided by the area over which that force is acting. In this case, our force is just the weight of the rock climber, since the climber's weight is being applied to the rope. The force of a weight is mg, where m is the mass of the climber, and g is the acceleration due to gravity. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, a is just the area over which the force acts, which, in the case of a climber pulling the rope vertically downward, is just going to be the area of the cross-section of the rope, or in other words, the area of the circle which is known to be pi times the radius squared. Keep in mind that we're only given the diameter of the rope, 9.6 millimeters. Now, since the radius is half of the diameter, we can just divide this by 2. 9.6 divided by 2 is 4.8, so the radius of the rope is 4.8 millimeters. Here I have plugged those numbers in, uh, and it's also worth noting that I converted from millimeters into meters to keep our units consistent, by multiplying by 10 to the negative 3. Put all of this into your calculator, and you should find a stress of 1.3 times 10 to the 7th power of newtons per meter squared. Finally, part C asks us for the Young's modulus, which is usually written as E. An elastic modulus is defined to be the constant of proportionality between stress and strain. So we can find the modulus here by taking our value for the stress and dividing it by the value for the strain. So, we just plug in the numbers that we calculated for parts A and parts B, and putting this into your calculator, we find a Young's modulus of 6.9 times 10 to the 9th power of newtons per meter squared. 